Here's another example of u substitution. We want to take the integral of the sine of 7x dx. Now remember what we're looking for. What we're looking for is what form of basic integrals does this look most like? And if you scan through that list, of course you're going to naturally go to the trig functions, and within that list you should find that we know the integral of sine of x is the negative cosine of x. Now of course thinking in terms of u substitution we're going to use the variable u instead of x. So we'll write something like the integral of sine of u du equals negative cosine of u plus c. So we'd like it to fit that form which automatically tells us that the substitution we want to make is that u equals 7x. Now looking back at the last example you should see that the next step is to find du that's the other half of our substitution. We have to replace all the x's, but also we have to replace dx. So the du you find by differentiating u. So the derivative of 7x is x. And then you tag on dx. Now to make this substitution, notice we have this 7x ready to be replaced with a u. But then the dx we need to replace as well. And so we'll do the same step we did last time, where we'll divide both sides here by 7 in order to solve for dx. So now we can replace dx with 1 7th du. What that looks like is when we've substituted, we end up with sine of u, and then dx gets replaced with 1 7th. I'll put that in front just to keep things in a familiar form, and then du. So after substituting, we have 1 7th times the sine of u times du. That we can integrate. The 1 7th gets carried along. The sine function turns into the negative cosine function. So we'll put the negative sine out front. And then we have plus c. And we're almost done. The only remaining step is to replace u back with 7x so that our answer is in the same variable that the question was given. So we'll have negative 1 7th cosine of 7x plus c. And of course, as always, you can check your answer by differentiating that. And when you differentiate, you would need to use the chain rule, which again is kind of a hint that u substitution is the way to go. So with these, you might get to the point where after you do a couple of them, you recognize the pattern enough that you can skip this whole process. And I don't want to encourage you to skip the work necessarily, especially as you're beginning, but it would be good if you do enough of these examples to where it does become almost second nature. Because what you're going to find is, especially in the homework, you might have a problem that has two or three parts, maybe added or subtracted together, and each one of those parts is something like sine of 7x. And if you had to stop and do u substitution on each of them, it would get pretty tedious. But if you can recognize the pattern enough that you can immediately write down the answer. It'll save you a lot of effort. So for instance, see if you can do this one without writing down all of the u substitution work. If we just follow the same pattern, we're going to think about the integral of the cosine function, ignoring what's inside it for a second. The overall structure, if you kind of squint at this, is cosine of something dx. And we know that the integral of the cosine function is the sine function. So the answer to this should be sine of whatever we had to begin with. And the only adjustment is going to be dividing by whatever's inside the parentheses, or more specifically by whatever the coefficient of x is inside there. So we're going to divide by negative 1 fourth. Just like on the first one, we integrated the sine function and got the cosine function with a negative, and then we divided by 7, and we got the final answer. So once you see that pattern, anytime you have the sine of something times x or the cosine of something times x, you can kind of jump straight to the answer by applying the right substitution. You could even take one that looks more complicated, and maybe you're not ready for this, but if you want to try this one, see if you can do it 
without writing down all the substitution. But if you need to, feel free to pause and do that. If you look at this though, the overall structure of this problem is the secant squared of something. And if you look back at your basic integrals list, the derivative of the tangent function is secant squared, so the integral of secant squared is the tangent function. So this should just be the tangent of the same function, 9 twelfths x, and then we have to adjust by dividing by that coefficient of x, so dividing by 9 twelfths, which of course is the same as multiplying by 12 over 9. So again, it looks really complicated, but once you've done a few of these, you can learn to look past the details for a second and see the overall structure of the problem. Just like when you were learning derivatives, you had to learn how to see the structure of a problem to see if you were gonna use the product rule or the quotient rule or the chain rule to do it. Same thing applies here. You wanna look at the overall structure to see what form applies, and then if you can apply an adjustment with uh, dividing by this coefficient of x then that works like that. So any one of these that fits this specific pattern where you have a trig function that you know how to deal with, and then inside that trig function you have something times x, you can apply this pattern to it, just to save yourself some time. If it were something more complicated like the sine of x squared plus two, then we would have to do it a different way. But for this kind of pattern, you can use uh, some pattern matching, some pattern recognition to do it. Let me show you one slightly more complicated one where we can't do this necessarily. Let's say we had something like x times secant of x squared times tangent of x squared. To do this one, you should again look and see what overall pattern this fits. And the one that this looks closest to is where we know that the integral of secant of x, or we'll use u here, times the tangent. equals secant of u. Because the derivative of the secant function is secant tangent. So again, that tells us what our substitution needs to be. Our u needs to be x squared. The next step, as always, is to find du. And that's going to be the derivative of u. In our case, that makes it 2x times dx. Okay, let's see how this works. We have x squared ready to be replaced with u, and then the remainder outside of the secant tangent structure, we have x and we have dx, which is almost what we need right here. We're just off by a factor of two. So we're close to the full answer, but we're not quite there. So the piece we want to replace is x dx what we have is 2x dx. So we can divide both sides by two, and that gives us exactly what we want to replace. So that's a trick that you're gonna use a lot, and we'll see that in several other examples going forward, where the piece we want to match is almost what we have with du, but it's off by a multiple of x. And if that's the case, we can just divide to make it work. And so we can substitute for the rest of it. So if that step is confusing for right now, don't worry too much, because we'll see it over and over again in the examples going forward to where it will get very familiar. All right, so for now, if we move forward with this one, we can make our substitution. We end up with secant of u times tangent of u and then the x and dx together get replaced with 1 half times du. So we'll put the 1 half out front and the du. Now when we integrate, the 1 half gets carried along for the ride, and the secant times tangent, we can use this rule to say that's gonna become just secant of u plus c. And then our final answer just replaces u back with x squared in our case because that's our substitution that we defined. So there's our answer. So that's a slightly more complicated one, but I wanted to throw that in here just to show you that even more complicated ones 
that don't match that other trig formulation can still be done in the same way. And we'll use this concept here where we move constants around. We'll use that in lots of other examples going forward.